Your Excellency the President, the Deputy President, the Right Honorable Raila Odinga, all protocols observed. The Chinese usually say that a journey of 1,000 miles starts with one step. That journey started with a handshake. It has gone several miles. I think it's past halfway. Today is another critical juncture in which we go into the next phase to also involve Kenyans. And we hope there are 1,000 miles we shall reach. Thank you. Your Excellency, Namalizia Kusema, Zikizungumza na wananchi wa Kenya kila papote walipo. Ya kwamba sisi kama nchi tuna bahati kuwa na kiongozi wetu President Uhuru Kenyatta mbaye amesema hii ripoti yenu mlienda mkakusanya mimi nitarudisha pia kwa wananchi waichunguze waiangalie kama kuna mapendekezo wafanye na simu mpigane mkofi Asante sana mzee mimi tawachia hapo na kushukuru Thank you Mr Chairman sir allow me sir to now invite one lady and one gentleman to briefly discuss and shed light on the provisions of the BBI Task Force Report. And Your Excellency, to open the presentation is Professor Patricia Kameli Bote. She is a professor of law and a former dean school of law in the University of Nairobi. Briefly, Professor Kaidli, let us tell Kenyans what there is in the BBI report. Honorable President of the Republic of Kenya, Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is my distinct pleasure to have this opportunity to present this report to you, and I will be brief as I have been asked to be. I'd just like to say that I wasn't one of the members of the BBI team, and uh, I was asked to present this report three days ago, and the condition that we gave with my colleague was that we should read it, and we have read it. Uh, we got the report last night at 8 p.m., by which point some of you had already received the report and were probably reading it ahead of us or with us. So what I'll do is go through what, uh, what is it that Kenyans really wanted. The nine issues that uh, the chair of the BBI task force has talked about are national ethos, responsibilities and rights, ethnic antagonism and competition, inclusivity, shared prosperity, safety and security, devolution, corruption, divisive elections, and there was an additional issue which was commissions and cross-cutting issues. So what concerns Kenyans? What did they say ails us? One is that we do not have a national bond. And they also felt that there is no luxury of time. There is an urgent need to change. The other thing that Kenyan said was that we have very many young people, and many of them feel excluded, that we have a high trust deficit, both amongst those who rule and those who are ruled, and amongst ourselves as citizens. We have a culture of lawlessness, we have no vision for a future, and our families are in crisis. Another thing that Kenyan said was that we focus unduly on sharing the national cake, but we do not concern ourselves as much with how to bake a bigger cake. There was also the view that we have a leadership crisis in this country, that public servants are not servants. They act as bosses that we have uh, insensitivity to people who live with disabilities or who are not like ourselves, 
and that we also have an attitude and behavior problem. We sweep our injustices under the carpet. That's why we're always talking about historical injustices. People do not feel safe in this country. They do not feel safe and secure. And therefore, we need a national, all-inclusive and, encom and encompassing conversation. With regard to the issue of na national ethos, we got uh, straight from the report this statement. Kusema ukweli, sisi ni kama tumepotea sana. Sababu moja ni vile tumekosa zile sheria za milazetu na desturi. And I think, again, uh, as uh, the Swahili say, wakosa, uh, wakosa mila ni watumwa. There is a clash between what we adopted as modern ways and our traditions. We have a culture of sloganeering, but we, are not, we don't seem convinced and we don't act. And it is now time to take stock of our history and our histories so that we know who we are. We need to develop a national vision beyond the electoral cycle of five years. And uh, we also need to jivunie who our Africa and be comfortable in our African schemes. We must, in this regard, protect our national, her our cultural heritage. And uh, it was proposed that we rename 26th of December, which is currently called uh, Boxing Day, to National Culture Day. Uh, there was also the proposal that we need a deepened focus on uh, ethics and that we need to develop a national volunteers network and establish an ethics commission quite apart from the ethics and anti-corruption uh, commission so that we have a positive way of addressing the integrity deficit. We need to develop and implement enforcement mechanisms for chapter six of our constitution which deals with leadership and integrity. <laughs> On the issue of responsibilities and rights, again it was felt that many of us deal a lot with hakietu, but we don't look at jukumu letu. We, we look at uh, rights but not responsibilities. So we need to have sustained civic education on responsibilities, rights, and interlinkages. And as public servants, uh, we should lead from the front. We should be uh, compelled to use the services that we manage so that myself, as a person who teaches in a public university, should not have my child going to study law in another university because if I'm a leading professor for other people's children, I should be for my children. The same thing with education. <laughs> that we should have an interministerial task force to deal with uh, parenting, and this should not just be at the government level. We need to involve cultural and religious institutions. We need to have ethics and accountability training in all workplaces and have Kenyans between 18 and 26 undertake six months voluntary national service as they do it. They do this in countries like Israel and uh, the Netherlands. Uh, the next issue, uh, Your Excellency Sir, is shared responsibility. And here, the key challenges are extreme income inequality. There is also the issue of unemployment and underemployment, especially of our youth. There is the problem of rent seeking and this has impacts on our agriculture and uh, livestock production, among other sectors. We have a lot of poverty. There is a lack of competitive in our businesses and uh, in the things we do. And we are still talking of malnutrition 56 years after independence. So we need a new economic paradigm for prosperity and uh, to create jobs. One, by promoting and incentivizing or providing um, ways for people to invest uh, locally and diaspora. We need to build the economy from the grassroots. So we shouldn't be talking about creating business from the top. 
We should worry about Mamamboga, Juakali, and the small and medium enterprises. We should also align employment and income opportunities to the expectations of young Kenyans. I think it was noted to me that the average age of the farmer in Kenya is 55 years. And we are still talking of an economy based on agriculture, which therefore is leaving quite a big chunk of our population. So we need to look at the sectors where our youth are engaged. We need to encourage a national savings culture and also protect inventions by Kenyans, our traditional knowledge, and our cultural exp expressions, which also feeds into our building who we are as Kenyans. There should be uh, legal compulsion. Law should be used to compel uh, us as a country to spend more on development and not on recurrent expenditure. And it was proposed that we should have 70% on development and only 30% on uh, recurrent expenditure. We should broaden our tax base also and provide uh, tax incentives for youth-based businesses, such as giving them tax holidays for a number of years to enable them to establish themselves. The last issue that I'll uh, address, uh, Your Excellency the President, is corruption. Uh, corruption and abuse of public trust are everywhere. I dare say corruption and abuse of trust are everywhere. It's not just public. Citizens celebrate corruption despite its negative effects on them, and we cheerlead people we know are corrupt and even envy and would want to be like them. The fight against corruption, Your Excellency, the Kenyan said, is ineffective. And Chapter 6 of the Constitution, 10 years later, has not been implemented. Cartels are in all sectors. The economy is captured and it is rigged from the beginning. Uh, so what do we do? We need to give incentives to whistleblowers. And an example was given that if there are proceeds from uh, prosecutions for corruption, we, they sh we should give 5% to whistleblowers so that they, they can engage in uh, this uh, activity. Uh, the next issue. <laughs> The next issue, <laughs> order, order, the next issue, Mr. President, is that there are certain people who it's going to be difficult to prosecute, and these include lawyers like myself, judges and legislators, and here it was proposed that we should conduct anti-corruption sting campaigns. We should punish facilitators of money laundering and tax invasions in banks and also in the private sector. And uh, also to destroy cartels, we need to use intelligence-led evidence to gather uh, evidence and prosecute these uh, actors in the cartels. Public officers should not do business with the government, Mr. President. So, the NEGWA report that uh, allowed uh, public servants to do business with government should actually be now uh, thrown out as it is not serving our country. We should make wealth declaration forms public and leaders should assume political responsibility and resign for negligence and poor action that leads to disasters. So we shouldn't have the culture of saying, I will only, I, you, I, will, um, I will resign when I am dead. Basically, find me guilty. Just honor should let us step aside. We should ensure 100% digitization of government services, and we should also increase public confidence in our judiciary. 
Again, we are coming from a point where before the Constitution there was very low levels of confidence in the judiciary. We need to enhance this by enhancing the capacity of the Judiciary Ombudsperson and empowering the Judicial Service Commission to deal with disciplinary cases of judges that do not warrant removal. We need to strengthen the, the Office of the Controller of Budget and this is the capacity to detect and respond to misappropriation, wastage, and illegal processes. And we should finally, Your Excellency the President, we should finalize the parastatal reform. I thank you. Thank you, Professor. You've spoken like one. And Your Excellency, sir, to continue with the discussion is Dr. Collins Odote, a senior lecturer in law at the University of Nairobi. Karibu. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, fellow Kenyans, the next issue I would like to speak about that the report talks to is devolution. The Professor Patricia has mentioned a lot of complaints. Devolution is not one of them. Kenyans from Taita Taveta to Habasweni, from Loitoktok to Asumbi, are all happy with the devolution. But they raise challenges in its implementation. Challenges relating to corruption, a bloated workforce, chronism, incomplete transfer of functions, limited budgetary allocations, and inability of counties to raise their own revenue. They want to share the cake, they don't want to bake the cake. For that reason, Your Excellency, fellow Kenyans, the proposals that the task force makes is number one, please retain all our 47 counties. But allow counties to continue forming regional economic blocks on a voluntary basis. Number three, please increase allocations to counties to at least 35% of the last audited accounts. Number four, please ensure we have an engendered governance at the county level. What does that mean? If the governor is a lady, like in Kirinyaga, the deputy governor must be a man. Fellow Kenyans, and vice versa, if the governor is a man, the deputy governor must be a lady. <laughs> Next is to deal with the issue of deputy governors when the governor is not there, that the law compels the governor to appoint a deputy governor within 90 days of the vacancy. <laughs> and that's not all. Should that not happen, then the speaker of that county assembly will nominate, and with the approval of the county assembly, a deputy governor will be appointed. The next recommendation addresses the thorny issue of health services, and the report recommends the establishment of a health commission to deal with human resource functions only. Fellow Kenyans, to address the issue of accountability at the county level, let us have county assemblies having financial autonomy and controlling their own budgets. Since services must be at the lowest level possible, the report proposes that we allocate more monies to wards for development and that at least 30% be spent in wards over a five-year period. But that counties must also contribute to growing the national pie. On safety and security, as Patricia has said, Kenyans do not feel safe either on land from both internal and external sources. They don't feel space on the cyberspace. They don't feel safe everywhere. So the, the, and this is exacerbated by politics and by ethnicity. And the report recommends several measures. Number one, please involve citizens in policing services. Number two, please ensure that policing services are equitably distributed across the entire country. Number three, that the president must develop a comprehensive national security strategy, which is reviewed every two years. And when a new president comes in within the first three months, he has his own national security strategy. Number four, 
that we strengthen the National Police Service so that they also deal with those who provide us with security. They deal with the wellness and the mental health of our men and women in blue, the people who help us on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> Second, lastly, on that issue, that we must deal with gender-based violence. And lastly, to show how comprehensive the report is, that we must also ensure that all new roads coming up in urban areas must have walkways for pedestrians and cycling lanes for cyclists. <laughs> and let me now go to the last issues, which we deliberately put last, which are the issues that address politics and elections. Issue number one around that is ethnic antagonism and competition. And the report recommends that we abolish the winner-takes-all presidential system. And I'll be saying about how. Number two, that we ensure that the president, in terms of governing the country, receives advice also from Wazes, a non-salary council of advisors, who will then give him some advice on, a, on issues of cohesion. <laughs> Number three, that we realize that we are not just Kenya, we are part of the global village. We also accelerate regional integration and focus on the East African political federation. So it's good to see the minister from Tanzania here with us. We need to institutionalize our political parties, strengthen the office of the registrar of political parties, and appoint a substantive registrar of political parties. On the issue of divisive elections, you already know what it says. This is the one issue that has been cast a lot since yesterday, but I will say just two or three things. Number one, that we continue having an executive president as the head of state, head of government, and commander-in-chief of the armed forces. But in addition, we have a prime minister who is a member of parliament, importantly, whose only salary, salary will be the salary of a member of parliament who will be the leader of government business in the National Assembly, and who will be the supervisor of government affairs. Number three, that we have a mixed cabinet, both of politicians and technocrats. But as, as soon as they have been appointed, they become ex official members of parliament. Number four, and I'm sure my friend, former Secretary General of NCCK, will be happy about this, we recognize the position of the leader of opposition. He used to say, dignify the opposition, and have a shadow cabinet that parties should meet the two-thirds gender requirements through party lists, yeah. that people's choices in elections be respected, including at the party primaries levels, that we save all our 290 constituencies, all of them, none disappears. A lot of recommendations around IEBC, including number one, we have a new IEBC before 2022 elections, all IEBC staff to be there for just three years contract, renewable ones. Returning officers to be appointed the same way you appoint commissioners and to serve on a part-time basis to conduct only one elections. Number three, that IEBC commissioners be appointed through parliamentary political parties. Number four, to avoid the distributions of powers between chairman and CEO of IEBC, we make the chair an executive chairman. So it's both chair and CEO of IEBC. Sadly for me, but good for Kenya, we remove the requirement that the chair must be a lawyer, so that anybody can be a chair for IEBC. <laughs> On the issue of inclusivity, fellow Kenyans, Kenyans want inclusivity at all levels, not just political. They want political, economic, social, religious, culture, age, and gender inclusivity. So the measures address all those things, including promoting and building trust in indigenous knowledge, in Kenyan products, and in Kenyan medicine. That we also establish an office of public participation rapporteur to be able to see how citizens are engaging in public affairs. Secondly, that we, establish, we respect the principle of one man, one vote as the basis of electoral democracy. <laughs> Fellow Kenyans, in the Constitution, we have some things called Chapter 15 commissions. And the report makes several fundamental recommendations on Chapter 15 recomm uh, con commissions. Number one, that half of those, the members of those commissions, except for IEBC, be part-time. Number two, that the chairs of all those commissions be executive chairs, so that you don't have a chair and CEO. Number three, that those commissions be made much more accountable. Regular audit and vetting so that they are able to give Kenyans value for money. Lastly, is what the report calls cross-cutting issues, and I'll talk about four of them. Number one, that we are, that Nairobi be recognized as a capital city and given special status. 
but we retain ward representation and parliamentary representation for Nairobi. Number two, that we strengthen the Directorate of Criminal Investigations. Number three, we increase resource allocations to all DPP. Number four, we strengthen the govern government chemists. And importantly, to address concerns about uh, mercury in sugar, reports about aflatoxin, that we create a unified and an assertive food security regulatory body. <laughs> Lastly, Your Excellency fellow Kenyans, this report that we've just read over the last one night has canvassed many issues. It proposes a 19-month implementation period. The report is not prescriptive. His Excellency said yesterday at State House that this report is not for a few leaders. It is for all of us. So let us have honest engagement on the document. But before doing so, please read the document so that you don't say, as people said in 2005, that X has read for me, so I don't need to read it. Kenya is too serious to leave to a few people. It's for all of us. I thank you very much. Asante sana, Dr. Collins Odopte and Professor Patricia Kameli Bote. Tuapungeze kwa makofi.